your resume in general, but then if you look past, like, your grandparents did big things too. Did your great grandparents do big things? I don't know. You know, it's uh, humble beginnings. No, humble. We had a very humble, you know, history. Yeah. And actually, some things that have come up too that I'm like, oh, that's actually helpful to know just for certain, like, you know, habits and certain things in life you're like oh I didn't know that about great great grandpa that's actually good to know (laughs) yeah that's as far as I've gotten I did the ancestry or whatever I have so many cousins that I like don't know about and I'll ask my dad and he's like oh yeah Judy and I'm like what yeah how do I not know Judy yeah they're first cousins that's crazy it really is yeah I, my, one of my grandpa's my grandfather's just passed away and and we I'm went and to the funeral and seeing all the cousins and, and all the you know the nieces and nephews and what are those called now mm. great second cousins second if your cousins cousin. have kids what are, how are they related to you if your cousins have kids yeah second cousins second cousins yeah okay so they're running around but it's 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 wild to think about like I don't know why I'm talking about this now. We're coming in <laughs> we, hot. You know what? We could go through any topic. It doesn't we're matter. We're coming in hot. <laughs> I don't have a rhyme to my reason. But it made me think about like f- grandparents in general. Yeah. How we're like, wow, like we only really knew them when they were like in their like l- later part of life. I know. Like we had no idea what they were like, and they're like their four different lives they lived before we even. met And them. why are they so humble? Because if I was my grandpa, like I actually, this is morbid, but sometimes I enjoy funerals because you learn so much about a person, and you're like oh, yeah. you're celebrating how like the craziest shit they did. My grandpa's funeral, I was like, what? I yeah. was like, he did so much cool stuff, and I'm like. If I was my grandpa, I'd be pumping my own tires. Like, <laughs> yeah. to my grandkids, I'd be like, well, you know what I did? Yeah. yeah just listen humble. listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> well, even just recently, literally a couple weeks ago, same with my grandpa. He was one of those, you know, kind of people who were like, I I, I don't say I love you. Like, yeah. just, I, don't, I don't do that. Yeah. And he was just tough as nails, yeah. worked, 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 worked. That was his value. That's the way he showed his value yep. and how he showed his love for his family mm-hmm. by working hard. And so I was just like, this guy, you know, my experience with him is like, oh, he's just you know, kind of cold. Yeah, yeah. And at the funeral, I, there's a stack of letters that are like this tall that he's he wrote my to my grandma. <gasps> oh. And and I mean like the most beautiful cursive wow. calligraphy handwriting. I'm like, first of all, I'm blown away by that. You're like, yeah, what, who? <laughs> and then we start reading it and it's like, I'll never forget the way I felt and now that, now that you are gone, I'm waiting for the day. It's just Aww. so, like, it's just... You know, um, there's a missing link within me, and you co- complete that link. And wow, I was like, Grandpa, what the? Yeah, why are you hiding that? That's a talent right there. Who hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? This beautiful man. Oh my gosh, do you ever write handwritten letters anymore? No, it's so sad. It is sad. It is I even sad. find it a huge inconvenience when I have to like write somebody a card. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. And I just typed this. This could have been a text. <laughs> it could have been a text. I could have actually. I don't even text anymore. To be honest with you, really, I don't even text anymore. I voice now. Oh, I go, voice note, Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? Da, 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 da. Or I do a video. I'm just like, hey, because even texting that. stresses me what out. What if it's work though? Because my fiance sends me voice notes for work stuff, and I'm like, I'm never gonna remember what you said. Right. I don't have time to take notes. And then it's gone. And then it's gone. <laughs> and then if I want to keep it, I have to go back and listen to your three minute voice note like this <laughs> to get to that last part. Yeah. yeah but yeah. if it's just like, a, hey, how's it going? I love a voice note. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, for sure. No, for sure. I think. And then even just now on the way here, I was talking to somebody, you know, creative for my, one of my creative directors for a project I'm doing, and we were just voice note, noting back and forth. Yeah. Should we just call each other? Yeah. <laughs> like, this feels a little like, like I feel like we're we're basically having a full conversation, but I know. we're just yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard of the app called Marco Polo? No. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes, I have. have. I did. Yeah. I'm obsessed with it, and that's how I talk. And I, I think that way every time. I'm like, this, why don't I just call you? <laughs> but it's <laughs> yeah. like it's like video chat for when you have time. Yeah. So yeah. it's nice. But uh, before you got here, I was just scrolling as one does. Scrollies. What what is with I don't know if this is like a dancer thing or if this is just Gleb and Alan being completely weird. What is with them working out and then squeezing their sweat out of their shirt after to show everybody how much they sweat? I don't know. Is that a recent thing? I keep seeing them do it. Like Alan does it all the time. Gleb just did it, and oh. it's like the most awkward thing. Gleb like well, Gleb's just hilarious. But he got off the stair climber and he takes off his shirt. On his story, and he just goes in front of the camera and sque- wrings out his shirt, like like making it rain with his sweat. Oh. And then I saw Alan do it, and then I've seen one. I think I saw Sasha do it once, and I'm like, is this a thing? Um, no. have you done that? I don't think that's a thing. Okay, good. But listen, listen. Are there thirst 
trap moments and is that right you know? maybe sure. but i'm like that That's made me want to just throw up in vomit. my mouth a little bit yeah it makes you makes your like the the, the sides of your yeah. mouth like go, yeah. but not in a good way no no in a like want to throw up but yeah i don't know yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a chat with the boys if you could i'll say hey fellas hey hey <laughs> if hey. you could i i maybe it's like a trend that i'm missing i don't know no. you're up on the you on tiktok i, I listen don't... i'm not listen i was that first the covid times crushing it yeah i was so with it because yeah. i was like sitting there and i had time we're doing this and i don't know what's happening now i have no idea and no, by I don't the, the, the whole the whole tiktok world in my world has has changed yeah. so much it's no longer just a bit of fun and joy and a bit of that and this and that. It's like news. Oh, I know. And this and politics and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what happened just to good like, old fun dances, guys? What happened to just that? What happened to the woe? Yeah, I know. It's gotten so political. It's all and like, so serious. And everybody's so educated, but they're not. But like, yeah. they act like, like, I would trust a doctor on there. And then I'm like, yeah. wait a second, this is TikTok. That might not be a real doctor. But that's the thing is that there are actually some really great things on there where I'm like, oh, wow, that's actually really great. Advice, or that's a good like idea or life hack. And, I do, I do get yeah, inspired by some, for sure. You know, t- I mean, that's the beauty and the beast of social media. It's yeah, like, yeah, so annoying sometimes, but it it really does inspire me in other ways. That's the thing with just anything. I feel like, right? It's 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 knowing when to to use it and to enjoy it, and then knowing when to put it down and yeah. to like not let it affect you because it can yeah. really really affect you a lot. And that's, I think I've been fortunate to where at least I've been in sort of. You know, in the entertainment world since, I mean, really for the past at least 16 years yeah. now on television. And before then, it was like, um, what was those called? The boards? Like the message boards? Oh, you know what I mean? like threads and like... Yeah, this would be this on websites like, oh, yeah. chat room boards or something. Right. That was before Twitter and all that stuff. And so I remember that being like the first thing. We yeah. You could hear people's opinions yeah. and be like... Oh my gosh! There's a whole thing that's like I hate Derek. You know? Like, oh my <laughs> god! Thread about it. What is that? And then you look <laughs> I at must the, read. And just like thousands of people, are like this guy Derek, he's this weird looking guy and whatever, and skinny and scrawny and looks like a twelve year old prepubescent boy. No. You know when you're young and you're experiencing the threads that for the first are the meanest. Time, you're like, what? What is? Oh, this? and you were probably so young when you're reading this. And I'm like, uh, uh. <gasps> so, but my point being was like I've fortunately been able to like. Go through that, and you, yeah. it affects you, and then then figure out. Okay, now yeah. I gotta figure out how it cannot affect me. You know what I mean? Because you're it. able to um, realize that anyone with a platform will get shit on, like no matter who you are. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you're doing everything right; they'll find something wrong, especially on those threads. But I I was the same way. Like when I first came off TV, I was like, I can't I can't handle the hate. I don't know what I'm gonna do, and. Actually, at first I thought it was hilarious. Then I went through a like depressing phase where I was like, "Why do people hate me?" Yeah. And then now I'm in another phase where I'm like, I just like feel so sad for certain people too because I'm like, oh, I'll I'll just let them have their little entertainment moment. Like if if hating on me brings them a little bit of joy, that's okay with me. Yeah. And then you can and you can you can see you can see which ones are like, oh, actually they have a point, <laughs> yeah. or like, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you hit, you hit something. You hit a core, and like the reason why it's hurting me is because I know it might be true. That's I guess you have to be a little bit self aware with yeah. thick skin, yeah. and then have some experience with it too. I have you ever done um, like inner child work? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Okay, so I did a week retreat at Hoffman. Amazing. And it was like thirteen to fifteen hours a day of inner child work therapy, and I learned so much about myself. Yeah. Um, and like I've done so much therapy, but doing the inner child work took me mm-hmm. to a whole other level of being self aware. And I was like, I I can't like be the preacher of it, being like everybody must do it. But I'm like everybody must do it. Yeah. Listen, the whole concept of like knowing thyself mm-hmm. is so so important because yeah. it, you really understand like a lot of your patterns and your your rituals and your your habits. But um. It's funny. So I did something for like a, it was like a month long. Yeah, it was, it was pretty. In, wow. it was pretty in depth. A lot of trauma. Like a month. You, oh man, here I am, just like no, no, a no, week. no. That's no. Crazy. By the way, a week is intense. Yeah, it is intense. But intense, yeah. and that's a, a complete immersion. Yeah. Um, but there's this thing that I, 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 you know, we did. It was called a trauma egg. Yeah. And basically, you go back and you look at like all your traumas in your life. Mm-hmm. And of course, I wrote down like six, and the guy was like, "Hey." <laughs> LOL. Dig deeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm like looking at certain things. I'm like, well, is that, does that count for one? I don't know. Like, because in your mind, you think trauma, you're like. Somebody died dramatically yeah. in front of you and like, yeah. Yeah. But there's so many different levels and different, there's a spectrum of We call it big things. T and little T trauma. Yeah. Yeah. And so I write them all down and then 
the exercise, basically what you do is you, um, you create these little bubbles and you do them in order and you draw pictures. You can't write any words or letters. It they have to be pictures yep. of the trauma experience. Yep. So, and while you're drawing it, it basically makes you imagine it. Yep. And it really feels real. There's some times where I literally, it was like somatic where I'm like drawing it and my whole body starts like, like to yep. experience something. But what was so fascinating about that, we you're talking about learning about yourself and understanding yourself, is after looking at all these pictures, and they're all in this giant poster like this, yep. you basically have this snapshot of all these things that have happened in your life, and then you start to see these repetitions. You go, ooh, yeah. this is actually mirroring this, and that's in different stages of your life. Yeah. You're like, wow. It's just this understanding of yourself, and yeah. then you have this, like, all of a sudden, this, like, empowering feeling of, like, oh, I can change this, or I can... I can change the course. Right. It's pretty cool. It's pretty it cool. It really is. I did the same, the storyboarding with the, yeah. the, I did all the drawings and that that to me was something that stood out for me as well as being able to look at it as a snapshot and go, holy, I still do that and I didn't even know that affected me at that point in my yes, life. Yes, yes. And that is still showing up and yeah, it's, it's really wild and I just think some of the most important work people can do. I nerd out over therapy and stuff like that because it's I, dude it's so cool it's so cool it's so cool it's so fun and it's so i i just uh th that's what from pe people ask me like what's like your biggest piece of advice yeah. in general with people and, and i'm like honestly just being curious yeah like staying curious mm -hmm. because when you learn about yourself you realize that everybody has a story everybody has their own you know stuff and so when certain behaviors when people act a certain way yeah. i don't really sort of i i try not to judge and go oh my gosh I go, ooh, I lean in and get curious, yeah. like, ooh, why are they like that? Or yeah. why are they speaking like, why are they upset right now? Or why? And then it just becomes, it's kind of fun. It's it's just more enjoyable to like lean into somebody rather than just like judge somebody. And it's so nice to also have that, a different type of um, interaction with somebody than just like the small talk or yeah. the, you know, getting like work done or business conversations, like to meet somebody and have a real conversation or talk about things that matter, you just have this other like a, a different connection with them yeah like I went to after I did that week of therapy I went to an event where usually I would dread talking to people and get all like oh I don't want to but instead I just was like yeah I'm gonna I'm just gonna ask people questions and like get more curious I had the best night yeah. I had the best conversations and I walked away feeling like wait maybe I don't hate people <laughs> yeah no, no. And, and here's the thing, too. I think I think we get into, like, it, it does feel like it's more, like, comedic, right? Where right. we're like, oh, I just hate people. Like, right. even my fiance, she's like, she's like, I just hate people. I love animals so much. And I just, I get it. you know, and I, and I get it. But 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 when you actually, like, again, like, lean in and sort of listen to people's stories and connect mm -hmm. with them on, on those different levels. Because I think we connect easily on um, negative stuff. Totally. In general. Like, like, oh, why, why are you tired today? Oh, I woke up today. I just woke up. Yeah. You know? Whereas if we wake up and we're like, I feel great. Everybody's like, whoa, so Wait, what? what's wrong with <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah. Oh my Ow. God. They're so strange. They're, yeah, yeah, they're, it's they're, weird. They're very happy. It's, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. It's so weird. It's true. It's um, true. Yeah. I, I do feel like, you know, once you have that opportunity, and I, I always say too for people at home that think they don't have access to that kind of therapy, because sometimes they are really expensive retreats or yeah, yeah. there's so many... Um, things out there like podcasts or other things to like lean into and Facebook groups that you can all like find a community yeah. now, another beautiful part of the internet. As a dancer too, I think that like the young dancers now are like unbelievable. They're insane. And the reason why I feel like it's the, the um, accessibility to watching mm, videos yeah. and teachers and things like that. And whereas like back in our day when we're dancing, like we had a VHS and yeah. it's like, yo, check out this dance move, but you only can have it for a week. And then like, you gotta give it to this guy. But the same with like in like therapy or self growth or whatever that sort of area, my mentors, you know, some of them I know, yeah. Some of them they don't know who I am, but I watch their videos or yeah. I listen to them, and that's 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 all free, you know. So it's, it is, it's, it's yeah, there. exactly. It's it there. is there. That's I actually I'm sure you get this question all the time, but who is like the biggest inspiration to you, whether it be mental health or dancing or whatever it is? Well, my sort of my entry point for that world of just like self-development or self-growth or just, you know, confidence, if you yeah. will, was Tony Robbins. Oh, yeah. You know, Anthony Robbins was, um, I was 15 years old and my dance coach took me to the seminar when I was 15 and we're walking on hot coals, the whole like, it was like a weird cold really? thing. We're like, this is like, this is so weird. But there was this, undeniable powerful experience that I had even yeah. at a young age mm -hmm. and I didn't retain all the information I just you retained. probably did more than you think well no I but I definitely retained like 
three things, which is the way our physiology is, yeah. the way we use our language, and the way we use our focus, right? And being a competitive dancer, um, I really practiced that. You know, in competitions, I would have this anxiety about competing, all these different things. But just changing my physical state, all these sort of like little yeah. tools that I mm -hmm. learned at that seminar, for me, really catapulted me in like the competitive world. Then when I was on Dancing with the Stars, yeah. I continue to learn and practice different modalities of coaching and yeah. teaching myself so I can teach my partners. That for me, I feel like really just um, broadened just the whole experience, you know, and helped me sort of move forward in a different way. And people always say to me like, man, you just seem so lucky. And you're like, you are discrediting all my hard work. Well, no, but, but and I know I'll say I've been very, very lucky, very, very lucky in so many things. I mean, just the fact that there's a dance show called Dancing with the Stars when I was a ballroom dancer and it just happened to be at the right time. That's yep. pure luck, pure I grace. I disagree, but go on. Well, that, but then, though, there is there is grace and luck involved, for right. sure. But I was also prepared. Yes. You know what I mean? There's a preparation meets opportunity. Yes. Whereas often you can be prepared and you don't get the opportunity. Yeah. Or vice versa, you get the opportunity, but you're not ready. So I definitely, it was very lucky that those certain things aligned, but yes. I certainly grasped them and I ran with them without a doubt. A lot of people get scared to do that as well because... I mean, who is not afraid of failure? Would you say you're someone that's not afraid of failure? Because I, oh. I do think that, like, I'm not really, I'm, of course I'm afraid to fail in certain ways, but, like, I'm so much more willing to put myself out there and be a failure than just not do it at all. And I know that's, I don't know where that comes from with me. I'm, I feel like I've been that in a lot of ways in my life. But do you feel the same way or are you afraid of failure. I like, think, don't know. I haven't experienced it yet. No. <laughs> I'm oh, what? I'm just kidding. No. Who I would be if I didn't have these sort of experiences in my life, I would probably be very much afraid of failure. Yeah. Very, very much afraid. And actually, still am probably. Right. But I think it's through experiences I've just learned yep. that the moments when I look back at the moments I did fail yeah. or I came up short, they're always followed by something fantastic yes. and great. And so I almost look at those moments of like, okay, and, and, and part of that is because it lights a fuel, yeah. you know, or lights a hunger. Mm -hmm. And um, so knowing that now, I say I kind of sort of encourage, you know, people and or, you know, if I'm coaching somebody on, you know, Dancing with the Stars or World of Dance or, or yeah. just in everyday life, it's it's like, listen, those this moment's going to suck yeah. big time yeah. right now. It's going to hurt and feel that and honor that. Yeah. All those emotions. But trust me when I say that you're going to look back at this moment and be like, thank God for this moment. So true. And... I think Brene Brown said it great, actually, and I'm going to probably butcher the quote, but, but it's, um, you know, daring is not is not saying that you're risking to fail. Yeah. It's basically saying that I know I'm going to fail, but I'm still all in. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still all in. I love that. Know? One of my favorite sayings in life is do it scared. Yeah. Like, if you're afraid of failure, you can still do it scared and know that you will look back on it with so much gratitude for doing it. And you're like, I just did it scared. Yeah, because that's that's bravery, right? Because yeah. people are like, are you fearless? I'm like, well, no, you're not fearless. Yeah. You're, but you're brave. Right. Because you're definitely terrified. You're scared, but you do it anyways. Yes, exactly. And that is, that's bravery. You know? Yeah. And, and by the way, in running to a burning building or having an intimate or vulnerable conversation, yeah. you know what I mean? That's incredibly brave. So, yeah. 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 People don't give themselves enough credit for their bravery too, for certain things that they do. They, On the everybody, daily. And everybody's always like, I'm sure people look at you and go, he's doing this. And I mean, I'm going to toot your own horn for one second, but reading your credentials is so like, it's inspiring to me. Okay. Six times dancing with the stars champion. All, that alone, I'm like, how? How? <laughs> One season almost killed me. Well, it was funny, by the way, we mentioned about the failure part. My season with Sean Johnson yeah. was an all-star season. And it was oh, so, yeah. it's so oh, stupid. Oh, gosh. And were you the runner-up on that one? Or yes. Just, yeah. But like, the, the, the trophy looked different. And I'll never forget. I was like, I want that one. <laughs> like, yeah. It was so stupid. <laughs> but we, we came up second. And I remember being devastated by that. Because I also felt responsible. Because I, oh, like, yeah. I felt like, oh, I messed it up. Yeah. I made the wrong choice. And I let her down. And... But then that, that 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 season basically lit a fire, and I won the next two seasons in a row. That's crazy. And then it, so, again, look back at that moment. Um, actually, I'm going off script again, but um, uh, Sean Johnson, we just saw each other in Nashville. Actually, I saw that you guys were redoing your oh dance moves, and we were just joking. We're like, we're like, man, we should have won an All Star season, man. <laughs> like, we're not bitter at all. <laughs> 
and she sent me like a, a makeshift trophy. Oh, <laughs> that's the best. And I literally texted her. I was like, I was like, we're not bitter at all. This is no, great. no, not at all. Anyways, that's, it was pretty funny. Sean and Andrew are like two of my favorite people in Nashville. I love them. Okay, the Hyundai Tucson comes with America's best warranty, including 10 years or 100,000 miles. It's like a little mental vacation from worry that no other brand offers. So whether that's up into the mountains, hit the old slopes, on a ski trip, cruising down the coast to the beach, or just hitting the trailway out in wherever you go to get away from it all. Add in three years of Hyundai complimentary maintenance and five years of roadside assistance and the Tucson makes that mental vacation even more worry-free. Just don't forget your sunscreen and your bug spray and of course snacks. Don't forget anything, but it's your trip. So whatever. So take a mental vacation or better yet, a vacation vacation in the Tucson and leave those worries behind. The Tucson with America's best warranty. It's your journey. Test drive the Tucson at your nearest Hyundai dealer or learn more at HyundaiUSA.com. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. All right, the wait is finally over. Third Love's It Bra, aka the 24-7 t-shirt bra, is now available in a timeless and versatile white shade. Now, as we know, most bras suck. It's either comfy with zero support or it's supportive, but I'm rushing to take it off at the end of the day. So Third Love decided to make a better one. With a smoothing band and no slip pleated straps, all day comfort and support is possible in 13 colors, including seven shades of neutral. Available in 60 plus sizes, you'll walk away with a bra that actually fits, making every day a great boob day. We love those. Don't believe us? The 37,000 plus five-star reviews prove that this bra is the real deal. So visit thirdlove.com to find your fit and shop their best-selling bras. Get $15 off your first purchase. I always say that I bow down to moms. I'm just always in awe of the moms in my life, whether it's my own mom or my sister or my best friends. Just being a mother is one of life's greatest journeys, I believe. And whether it's your journey or the one of someone you love, Blue Nile can help you celebrate it. So at BlueNile.com, you can find the perfect piece of jewelry for life's special moments, whether you're looking for pearls or diamonds, earrings or lockets. I love a locket. Blue Nile's simple online tools let you choose the diamond shape, size and clarity, as well as the setting style. And they provide expert guidance, in-depth educational materials and unique online tools that place you in control so you can forget about the usual hassles of the jewelry shopping process and focus on getting that piece that mom will love. The diamond stud earrings that I got from them are so beautiful. I feel like they're perfect for every occasion. And there's just so many pieces on their site that I want for myself or to give as an amazing gift. I'm like, hello, Jason. I'm a dog mom. Blue Nile's diamond price guarantee allows you to compare a competitor's diamond against one of theirs. Blue Nile can even meet or beat their price. Every order is insured and arrives quickly and in discreet packaging, so it won't give away what's inside because it's going to be a nice little gift. Shipping is free and so are returns. So right now, get up to 50% off that Mother's Day gift she will love at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. BlueNile.com. 50% off. That's huge. Let me get back to pumping your tires. Okay. Um, New York Times bestselling author, 13 times primetime Emmy nominee for Outstanding Choreography, three times Emmy winner Outstanding Choreography, making you the most nominated male choreographer in Television Academy history. That's freaking cool. That's cool, man. Not to mention yeah. all your like tours coming up and your yeah. <laughs> shows that you did in Vegas. Like you, When people ask me how I have time to do everything and I'm like, well, I'm you know, I'm busy, but I do it. <laughs> you're planning a wedding. You're planning a live tour. You're doing Dancing with the Stars. When is World of Dance still filming? And no. Okay. Not World of Dance, no. That one's... That but one's how no. are you going to tour while being yeah. a judge, while planning a wedding? How do you do it? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. This year <laughs> feels crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, I'm, I don't know if you can tell, but my eyes are a little puffy this morning because I was... Um, I shot a music video yesterday, like um, that I was directed and stuff, and and it was a long day. Um, but even that, I was like, we did that. I was like, all right, Whew. yeah. And then I was like, oh wait, there's so much more to do. <laughs> there's so much more to happen. I mean, having a team, I'm sure, helps and a creative well, director. But your brain, the but, way your brain works. Here's the thing. So I actually my my I definitely have a sort of team, but really, when it comes to the creative part of it. It really kind of falls on me for everything. Even like even the music right now. I'm in the studio right now, recording the music and having like the 
the brass and the string players come in and I love that you're creating that. tracks for the tour. Yeah. Because I want them to feel like not just tracks we were to push play and play. Right. I want them to really feel like you know organic yeah. and, and big. Um, so there's that. Um, there's also a National Geographic show that I'm working on right now. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what? That was my. That's like a passion project. Um, National but, Geographic. Yeah. Tell me more. Yeah. So this one is um, basically it's my dream job. Yeah. Where I love adventure. I love you know. Just being crazy yeah. in the outdoors and stuff, but I also love dance, of course. So yeah. it's about going to the different countries and the origins of where dances oh, cool. came from, and learning about them, the cultures, the people. That's cool. Where where it really started, where it is now. Um, taking somebody along with me on that journey, on that adventure, and each you know it could be Austria, uh, Cuba, it could be Argentina, yeah. um, Brazil. I mean. It could be endless, honestly. So I'm, so I'm very excited So you're going to fit traveling the world in there, too. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like looking at I'm like, wait, what is that one happening? But, um, <laughs> but the wedding, the tour, and the Dance with the Stars all kind of in the same three months. Yeah. yeah She's she going to be a, she gonna be a I mean, crazy one. I mean, that's a doozy. It's a I, doozy. I, th- we get, you know, of course, the people online always want to know wedding updates. And I'm always like, I got nothing. Like, do you guys feel pressure from people to do that? Or are you kind of like, look, we're busy and we're going to make it happen when it happens? Well, I feel like... You probably felt so much pressure to even get engaged from the internet. Because I remember <laughs> seeing some jokes. You're like, I, yeah. I feel like people, of course, it's always, what's the next step? Then you get married. And then when are you having babies? Yeah. And you have a baby. And when's the next baby? Yeah. 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 No, it, it's it's the uh, the inquiry is is never ending. Yeah. But it's it's also cool. It's cool to... Um, it is cool to plan and and... I've actually been pretty involved with the nice. whole situation. Well, because you have a creative brain. <laughs> I feel like I picture you in that pro- – like you and Haley both I feel like have these brains that are just so beautiful and you have a vision always. You always have a vision. So it makes sense that you would be part of it. I've, I feel like I, it's going to be hard for me not to have like a headset on the day of the wedding. Yeah. I'm like, like, all right, cue, cue, cue Spit out the gum. Spit out the gum. Here we go. <laughs> And and uh, commence. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Um, but no, the good thing, the the main thing we have, like the venue, we have um, certain things all kind of in order. But uh, but we still have a lot to do. A yeah. Lot to do. For well, sure. my gosh, you realize how much goes into wedding yeah. planning, and yeah. also the fact that if it's like flowers, oh, but for a wedding, okay, an extra five thousand dollars for that, yeah. and like it's so expensive. It's wild, and I feel like. I don't know. It's a whole world. It's its own industry. It's yeah. its own thing. Yeah. Um, but I definitely f- get the feeling uh, that it's like, oh, it's a wedding. Oh, well, let's just quad times for that yeah. at least and quadruple the price for that. And you're like, wait, no, 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 no. Like, don't do that. Uh, you, you're just kidding. It's not a wedding. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a fake it's, wedding. Yeah. <laughs> we're just dressing up like bride and groom, just, but it's not just, a real thing. We're just hanging out. <laughs> um, it is crazy how people do that. But I was talking to a couple people in the wedding industry and – I was like, are you guys just making up for lost time because of the pandemic? And part of it is that. And they're like, you know, like we didn't have jobs for a couple of years. So they are adding money onto everything. Right, right, right. Yes, yes, perhaps. But I also feel like if you kind of stay firm with it a little bit and you're like, hey, this is just what it is, man. Yeah, you I think, got a wheel and deal. I think they'll kind of come around and be like, you know what? That's fair. <laughs> it's true. It's it's we're not in the pandemic anymore, are we? I don't even know. Sometimes I'm like, are we still in it? I'm not sure. Who knows? So that's ramen. <laughs> ramen, uh, we still in it, buddy. He's asleep between my legs. Yeah, I'm loving this, by the way. <laughs> oh my god, my baby boy. Oh, he's so sticky. My baby cute. boy. He's so cute. <laughs> um, I feel like in what you're saying, like this is a little crazy. Do you get pretty stressed out or are you even keeled? Or like, how do you deal with stress? I, if I'm completely honest with you, this past year, I've been a little bit more stressed yeah. um, than usual, yeah. actually. Yeah. I think because, honestly, this past couple of years, there have been so many great things. So many. So many great things, performances, you know, residencies in Vegas or... It's been really good. Yeah. And so I do feel a little bit of that pressure to continue to perform, mm-hmm. to to bring something good. Yeah. And something of like of a certain standard. Yeah. Um, however, but it's a catch twenty two, because when I do that, I perform not as well. Really? Yeah. And and I don't know just being like physically perform, yeah. I mean just like ideas or creativity. Yeah. Cause the truth is like if you get in your head, you're dead. Yeah. You know, basically. Yeah. We all know that. Yeah. And it's you you need to get into this flow state and that's basically a place of no mind. Mm-hmm. So it's I I understand that cognitively, but 
in the moment, I, I fail myself like, oh, oh, I gotta, no, no, I gotta, yeah. this has got to be better and I got to do this. And, then I, and it's also the feeling of um, if I don't do it, that it won't be done. Yeah. If I don't do it, then I can't really trust what they're going to bring to the table, you know, creatively in certain things. Um, and if I do, then it comes back and I'm not really happy with it and then yeah. I end up having to change it anyways. So I've definitely felt that the past probably two years now, yeah. if I'm completely honest with you. But I feel like even this project yesterday, a lot of things were going wrong. People weren't pulling their way. It was one of those things. And and I just stayed super, super calm. Yeah. And I just kind of like talked to the whole production. I said, hey, guys, let's let's all, you know, get on the same track yeah. here and give a little speech. And, yeah. And it was good, and it was fantastic. So um, sometimes that's more powerful than anger. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. I it, I need to learn that, but <laughs> well, and it's and it's never like anger. It's just frustration of just like whenever oh, yeah, I get the point, and not with other people, but yeah. with myself. Yeah, I, I'm like, why do I know the answer? Like, why, why can't I come up with this? And why? And it's so funny. You're asking like the wrong questions. Like, yeah, that's just the wrong questions. You ask the wrong questions, you're gonna get the wrong answers. Yeah. So the right questions are more like. You know, how how can I enjoy this moment even more? Mm-hmm. How can I be grateful for this situation? How how amazing is it that I'm ever, even here doing this? That's and, my favorite saying. That, well, I've said a couple of this podcast, but find the sacred. Like if you're in a stressed out moment, just find the sacred and just be like, wait, I'm here doing this. Yeah. This is what I love to do. And even just having that little shift can yeah. make such a difference. So I love that you do that. Absolutely. And it's also a reminder. We always say, you know, it's so over said, like stay in the present and right. stay in the now. But it's really powerful, obviously, and part of that is whenever you're feeling stressed, whenever you're feeling anxious, whenever you're feeling fearful, it's usually because you're thinking about something that hasn't happened or it's, you know, in the future. Yeah. Or you're, you know, thinking about something from the past. But if you actually think about this exact moment, like right now, the only thing that actually exists is right now you mm-hmm. and I talking. Mm-hmm. This is the only thing that exists. Nothing else exists. Yeah. Nothing. And even that moment that I just said, now that doesn't even it's exist. Gone. Like. It's kind of weird. I, it trips me it out when I think like out. that. Yeah. And when you do that, you have this. Often, I get this weird, like, whoa, kind of feeling. Same. And you're like, oh, actually, everything's okay. Yeah. Like, we're we're all good. Yeah. We're okay. So, that's a good reminder in those moments for sure. Life. <laughs> oh, life. Oh, life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you. Life. Wait, did I see you were like putting out a song or something? Are you putting out a song? Or were you just singing somewhere the other day that actually, I saw? Actually, you want to hear some of the fast? Yeah, <laughs> I do. What are you adding? Like, I actually okay. Check this out. I'm excited. Okay, I was in Nashville. Yeah. And you didn't call. I know. Just I did, well, you, you, you live in Nashville. <laughs> yeah, I live That's Nashville. right. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. I, is my sister looking for a house? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! I talk to her all the time. Yo, she's she's ridiculous. She's the best. Um. What the hell? What is it? A song? It's a song. <gasps> See, why did I know this? You it's, didn't put it out there? Did I just have a intuitive moment? Oh my god, I'm excited. Wait. Okay, fun. Oh my god. What did you like sing, write, produce, direct? I no, I no, I literally so we went in the studio and I just like started playing piano and and this so I started playing this chord progression and then I was like, Oh back time. Just like this idea of like holding back time, like holding this moment, like staying in this like Yeah, like what we're talking about. Yeah. And um and then it just turned into the song. And he just sent it to me like today. So I was like I was like, yeah. Oh my gosh. We don't have to play this though. But, I would yeah. actually love to hear it if yeah. you don't mind. Yeah, hold it up. You won't be alone. Let me show. Anyways. Wow. Anyways, it's, it's a little I ge- got goosies. It's a little generic. It's a little generic, but it was um but it was just kind of fun. It was like a fun thing. You did that in Nashville? Yeah. Just wrote a freaking ballad? Yeah, we just wrote a little ballad. Wow. A little, a little oh, ballad, my friend. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, anyways. Was your friend Justin Timberlake? <laughs> <laughs> Actually no, but he's a he's a great guy. Okay. So if you've been listening, you know I'm a fan of going to certain events, whether it's like a concert, comedy shows theater. Those are some of my favorites. I'm game for all of those. And I use game time for all of it. Game time is such an easy way to find tickets for every kind of event in your area, even if it's just super last minute. And I love myself a spontaneous event. So this helps me out a lot. You can even get tickets literally the day of the event. And the game time guarantee means that you will always get the best price. So if you find tickets in the same section and row for less somewhere else, game time will credit you 110%. 100%. 
at 10% of the difference. And GameTime is the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. In addition to last minute deals, you can get images of your seat before you buy, which is genius. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive, no surprises, and you can buy your tickets in literally seconds with just two taps. They're sent right to your phone, so you're all set. We love a convenient ticket. Snag the tickets without the stress with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code VINE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code VINE for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I think we can all agree that life moves so fast. So, so fast. But luckily, Starbucks Ready to Drink Coffee delivers an uplifting boost that helps you tune into the moments that matter wherever you are and whatever that you have going on. Starbucks Ready to Drink Coffee includes a variety of some of your favorite beverages from bottled Frappuccino chilled coffee drinks for a little pop of flavor to the bold and smooth taste of nitro cold brew. That is my personal Starbucks favorite right now, which I used to be only a hot coffee drinker. I'm really into cold brew right now. Now, as someone who is constantly on the go, and when I'm not on the go, I still got a lot going on. So I love anything that makes my day more convenient and just fits into my, my little routine. And that's why it's so perfect to have Starbucks coffee ready whenever I need it. So if I'm podcasting, responding to emails on the way to a meeting, or even just hanging out with friends, Starbucks ready to drink coffee is there for me for that little boost. Plus, they have so many choices for whatever mood I'm in. Like I mentioned, right now I've been into the cold brew, but I do love to switch it up every now and then too. Starbucks coffee ready for right now. Shop the full lineup online or in store wherever you buy groceries. Okay. So tell me about the symphony of dance because I love when movies do this, like home alone will play in Nashville around Christmas time, but they'll have the symphony come in. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the symphony is really having a moment. So to put dance to it, I want to hear all about the show that you're doing. Yes. So the new tour symphony of dance, um, it's going to be this fall um, it's the first time I've I've toured in four years, by yeah, the way. So really? it's, yeah, it's been four years. Oh, I've, wow. I've done the Vegas residencies. Oh right, I guess that wasn't yeah. touring. But to going to people's cities, yeah. these venues, um, going to just towns, I I can't wait. I love it. I love the whole touring yeah. um, experience. You do? I really do. A I lot. really really enjoy it, and I really enjoy too. I really enjoy the meet and greets. Mm. It's so funny. It's so funny when I hear certain people be like, "Ugh, the meet and greets." I'm like, "What?" I was like, they literally are my favorite things because one, getting to have that personal interaction with mm-hmm. everybody, the questions, I love sort of interacting, but also it just gets me really amped up yeah. for the show. Oh, 100%. Did show. you do the meet and greets before? Yeah, before. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, and I, and I, I over deliver on those as with pictures and questions and perform, like private yeah. performance and all these different things. Like, I really love those experiences. That's cool. um, so, the show itself, and the reason why it's Symphony of Dance, so I, I, I wanted to say this because. You hear the word symphony, you th- immediately think of an orchestra, right? Right. And there'll be some elements of that within yeah. the show musically. Yeah. Um, but for me, the idea of symphony of dance is is this: it's you know a symphony is broken up into four movements. You know, you have brass, wind, percussion, strings, mm-hmm. and each one of those movements represents and sort of you know um, makes you think of, of different types of music, right? Mm-hmm. And also different ty- styles of dance. So strings for me is like, you know, tangos or, yeah. or you know, the, the flamenco guitar. Yep. Um, and then brass is like big band music. Percussion, think Latin music. You know, you think, uh, you know, wind, I'm still working on wind. What that one? <laughs> <laughs> like, mm, contemporary. <laughs> yeah. But breath. I mean, there's, yeah. there's lots of different things. Yeah. But, but the idea too for me is a symphony is a collaboration. A symphony is a is a group. It's something that comes together to create something bigger than the sum of its parts. You know what I mean? So, it, and in life in general, I feel like we all have, we all play our instrument, we all have our skill, we all have our yeah. gift, we all have our thing. But when we really come together as like people and as a community or as a, uh, whatever it is, I think it we create this beautiful symphony. And so for me, mm-hmm. this tour is not just about just, you know, Crazy entertainment, which it will be, and every style of music and live musicians as well. Very, yeah, very important. That's cool for me. Um, it it's really about the idea of collaboration, mm-hmm. the idea of coming together. Yeah, and that's what Symphony of Dance is all about. So we'll have the big band music, we'll have the rock and roll, we'll have the 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 contemporary, we'll yeah. have all the different elements. Um, but I'm very, very excited, and it's actually also too. Haley's gonna be coming on tour. Oh, amazing! And it's the first time that we have toured together 
as a couple, really, ever. Are you going to be on a bus? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. We're going to be on a bus. And yeah, it's, I'm ex- but I'm excited about it. We both love touring. We I love it. I actually really liked doing the Dancing with the Stars tour. I I really enjoyed it. I was definitely ready for it to be done after three months. Sure, but, sure. So how long are you going to tour and where can people find what cities you're coming to? Yeah. So tickets can be found online yeah. at darecup.com. Yeah. All the ticket places. <laughs> All the ticket places. <laughs> The meet and greets are my favorite thing. I bet ever. they sell out so, so fast. I love them. It's it's a good experience, and this this is gonna be a very special tour for many reasons. Yeah. One, because it's been so long. Right. But two, I'm putting a lot into this like energy. I've been planning this for a while, and the music, and the band, and the costumes, and obviously, I've been, again, sharing this with Haley and this experience is gonna be a lot of fun. So, but we'll be on the road from I believe September 28th until about December. 20th holy it's gonna be holy it's gonna be a long time but it's gonna be on the at the same time as dancing with the stars yeah that's the nuttiest part i'm like how so you will be on the bus and then you'll just have that one day off to fly to la to you're insane yeah in the best way yeah so (laughs) so what's fun about that one though is that i think that if people are watching the show that they'll be able to see me in real time be like hey i didn't like what you said What'd you say that about so and so? And like, what was that score? That's and, true. And I could, they could, they, we could have this conversation face to face. People would love that <laughs> because I even want those moments as a viewer of this show. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just gonna DM him and be like, what the? Hey, that, do you know who any of the stars are for the upcoming? And obviously, you can't say it, but do you know any? I'm actually gonna say the whole cast right now. Perfect. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Heard it here first. I actually don't know, and and I I kind of purposely try not to know and try yeah. to try not to figure out only because one I do know, you know. For yeah. three months, and it's like okay, that's true. You have um, a little hype, a little it's, excitement. I, I like a bit of surprise, yeah. honestly. Um, but I, I do get a little bit of who? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. And then I kind of forget about it. But we have a new. Uh, I can't pronounce her last name very well. But she's. We have, we have, <laughs> is it Hugh or is it Hug? Um, Hug. 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 Hoof. I don't know where. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a cough. It's like. <laughs> actually, cough. It's spelled the same way. There you go. With the H. With the H. Huff. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, that's exciting that she's hosting. Yeah. I When that news came out, I was like, that is exactly who should be in that position. Yeah, it was a great – It's a. it makes sense. It makes it perfect does, sense. It makes so much sense. It's great. Her and Alphonse are going to be rock stars. And I'll oh tell you gosh. what, Tyra was so gracious and so kind. She wrote Julianne the most beautiful message. Um, I, she, she, Julianne was like, look at this message. I was like, wow, that was a really – That is something I will say about Tyra. She was so – Gracious to all of us too yeah. on that on the season I was on. She would make personal phone calls and ch- check in to see how we were feeling. Like yeah. people don't see that side of it. Yeah. And she was so I was like Tyra. Like one time I was like, "You're a scam." Like you're trying to find out who I'm partnered with because the news hadn't come out that I was with Artem. Yeah. And she was like, "So like your partner is who again?" And I was like, "This ain't Tyra." And she was like, <laughs> "Do you need me to do the voice?" And she did like America's Next Top Model voice for me just to make <laughs> me believe that. <laughs> Her. That's hilarious. But that's cool. Yeah. So uh, obviously you and your sister get along so well. You must be so excited to Yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. You got a lot of exciting stuff great. coming up, uh, as you always do. But it's gonna be good, a... good luck to you with Thank um you. staying on top of everything. Yeah, and yeah. um are you a good sleeper? Like when you sleep, do you get like a good solid like eight hours or are you like I've been waking up a little bit more like in the night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um but but I sleep good. Okay. I sleep good. It's important. I had to wake up at 4 a.m. this morning to catch the flight at 6 a.m. Oh, man. To get here and start podcasting. Wow. Um, It's okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I can't complain yeah. to you. Yeah. The busiest man yeah. in all of America. Yeah, you but got it. I'm, I'm always just in awe of you and everything that you accomplish in, with Haley. And I'm so excited for you guys to tour. What is going to be the one thing that is going to be difficult to be on a bus for that long with Haley? Hmm. Um, it might be the tidiness, honestly. <laughs> yeah, you realize on a bus who's clean and who's well. You also realize quick. when you just live with somebody. Oh, that's um, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, your house is probably a little bigger than a bus, but <laughs> well, yeah, but but it's funny. Like if you look at the bathrooms, like my sink versus her sink. Yeah, it's it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I, um, I get it. But no, I'm actually looking forward to it. You know, jokingly, she was always sort of like known as like the bag lady. Yeah, and there's actually f- numerous photos of her when she would go on tours. Um, she, for some reason, has like four rolling bags, two <laughs> duffel bags, and she carries them all like somehow. She has a system. And really? I'm like, hey, babe, we don't, we, we don't need all that. <laughs> yeah. 
We got just washing machines on on you know it's in the true. venues like so we're good. So. I was actually impressed with myself on tour. I brought like one small suitcase. And I was like, I'll just recycle the same sweatpants and like sweater. I mean, that's the thing. You wake up and you that's what you wear essentially. Yeah, and then you and, have costumes and everything. Yeah, yeah, and that's the meet and greets and stuff. But yeah, are you doing a show in Nashville? Because I need to make sure I'm on top of getting tickets. We'll be at the Grand Ole Opry. Yes! Yeah. So cool. We'll be there. So, um, wait, watch this. Ready? Yeah. I'm just going to do it because I'm just, whatever. What? We're doing it. We're doing do it. Do it. Oh, it's my thing. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I didn't hear you there for a second. This is ASMR. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. <laughs> kind of like that. We're going to be uh, talking about um, all the good things. I can't, can't find anything because I... Uh, I you keep doing this to me and you keep me on my toes and I don't know what you're doing. We're all unorganized over here. <laughs> What's happening? Um, I feel like we're like in a closet right now, <laughs> hiding from somebody. <laughs> Shh, don't say anything. I know I felt a little weird laughing out loud there. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we're gonna die now. <laughs> I feel like we're. Here's a bad luck. Oh gosh. Um. Oh, actually, real fast, I will say this as to why I'm looking for this, and you can include this or not, but we just had a Jack and Jill party. Yeah. And it was. Unbelievable. What's a Jack and Jill party? It's like Bachelor, Bachelorette, but combined. Oh, yes. Was oh, it so fun? Yo. What did you guys do? That's a good idea. I'm going to sh- – okay. We'll go this off a bit just because yeah. I – you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I will say this. There was one night where we did a uh, an escape room. Oh. Mm. Like a home – like but our friend planned it all. Cool. And it was a pirate night because we were on a boat. What? And it was like three teams – we're all dressed up. How fun. It was like at one point one of the teams got on a tender boat, rowed in the dark to a, a tiny little island that You're nobody kidding. was on. We were on the walkie-talkies on the boat. We had to solve a puzzle. Then we were like, all right, find this rock, north, uh, 12 paces northwest. Da, da, da. What? They d- it was unbelievable. You know how like misery loves company? I feel like creative minds love company. Like you guys just do the craziest stuff. I'm like, I want to be a part of your friend group. It, you're welcome I'm to. I'm slowly but surely ke- getting in there. Yes. <laughs> we are here together. How uh, fun. Is that why you had the pirate costume when you were doing but it's over. That's exactly why. You better sing that number two over there. <laughs> sing November 8th. November 8th? That was way too long and November 8th. Uh, oh, I forgot what we were even Grand talking. <laughs> November 8th. Got it. Grand Ole Opry. Noted. Okay. I'll yeah. be there. I'll be in a pirate suit in the front row. Heck yeah. Dude, please. <laughs> Can you please be in yes. a pirate suit? Yes. I have one at home. With one of these curly mustaches? Yes. And I'll be the obnoxious person that wears the hat at a show. You know when people wear hats yeah. to a show or a or concert? That, or, or that like... lady at the Oscars. Remember, did you see that? Where she had this, this it was dope outfit, by the way. Right. But the, She's for sure, the, everyone. For sure, the five people behind her could not see anything because it was like it was like <laughs> this. This is rude. This is um, rude. But it was very stylish. It was very cool. I'll just do an eye patch and call yeah. it a day. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming today. Pleasure. I'm excited for everything. Thank and you. Uh, wh- are you going to release that song or what? Oh, I don't know. I'll just probably hold on to it. What? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be like, uh, yeah. Okay. Whatever. You <laughs> blow my mind. Uh, thank you for coming, and I'm excited for everyone to go see your show. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Caitlin Bristow. I'll see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday.